Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you the secret of area roughing. So area roughing is an option within the multi-axis mill operation, uh, and it can really help rough out your part in the fifth axis. Oftentimes we'll use a 2.5D or a 3D toolpath to kind of rough out the part, but that sometimes that's not possible with parts like this. On uh, turbo machinery, there's a lot of blisks or impellers where there really isn't the best way to get at it from one single direction. So you're going to have to resort, to resort to using a five axis operation, and that's what we're going to cover here. So first, I have a multi-surface feature already defined representing that wall of that vein and this wall of that vein. I'm looking to machine the area in between those two. Uh, second, I've defined another multi-surface feature that represents the fillets on the bottom there. Uh, really, this is just for the purpose of the multi-axis toolpath itself. I'm gonna use this to guide the trajectory of my toolpath along those faces. So I'm really just defining it as an avoid, only so that I don't generate an operation from that. So having already added those in and define my strategy. I'm just going to go to generate operation plan and that opens up a multi-axis mill. I'll just open this guy up and because the strategy defaulted to a tool that I'm not looking to use, once this is open I'm going to go to my tool tab, my tool crib, and I'd like to use tool 55 on this one. So I'm just going to grab tool 55, select. It's going to ask me if I'd like to use the corresponding holder. I'll say yes. And then from there, we have the tool I'm looking to use. So let's, our, let's start creating this toolpath. So if I go to pattern, the method is milling, and the pattern, I'm gonna use offset from surface. This will allow me to choose a surface to dictate the travel of the tool along my featured surfaces. So in this case, if I go to surface, it's gonna ask me for which surface I'd like to use. I already predefined this one here, so I just need to check the box. Otherwise, I could go to the bottom right here and click Create Features, and that would allow me to choose my surfaces and then define that as a multi-surface feature. So since I already have it, I'll just click OK. Okay, from there, um, everything else on here is very similar to the other five axis applications you'd be using. I'm just gonna do this as a zig pattern. I'll do lane, climb milling. Down on the bottom here on the limits though, for now, I'm just gonna put this at number of cuts one. I just wanna see what this toolpath looks like as is. Under entry slash retract, well, we're doing a five axis part. I don't really wanna retract in the Z direction because that wouldn't make sense. So I'm gonna switch this to cylinder around Z. And then I'm just gonna give this a radius that might be a little better for the size of my part. So pretty much right there, that 5.5 looks good to me. Okay, so everything else on here, you can play around with, you can get this to, to do the different things you want. I'm really more concerned with the fact that it's five axis. I'm just gonna make sure that this uses the side of the tool. So I'm gonna set the side tilt angle to 90. And as always, I'm gonna do a preview before I try and save this. I just wanna see what this looks like as is. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because the base multi-axis mill toolpath will give me an idea of the travel of the tool along those two surfaces. I have two surfaces selected. I have to guide surfaces, the offset from surface functionality defined. I just wanna see what those two separate passes look like. So they look like they pass just on the bottom of those surfaces. I can check that the angle is correct. It is 90 degrees to the surface normal of those faces. So this alone is where we're starting from. So this doesn't really give me what I'm looking for. I wanna rough out this entire area. So the way that area roughing works is if we go to the roughing tab, all it is is just right here. A lot of people don't even see it, but if we check this box, it opens up an options box here that has a lot of information in here. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm gonna get it to blend a toolpath between that pass and that pass. That's gonna cross that exact surface right there. So let's start by going to how I'm gonna apply the calculation. Well, if I'm, if I'm eventually gonna put some gouge checking, I want this to happen after the gouge checking. There's no sense in adding all these extra passes if it's just gonna gouge. We're rotating this around the Z axis. That is the rotary axis of this machine. And the step over, I don't want to be here forever. Let's just make this 100 thou. The pattern, we'll just do climb milling in a zigzag. 
we'll complete the area before we move on. And for now, I'm just going to leave this as is. Just want to click OK. And let's do a preview on that just to see how that is generated. Now, over time, the more you do this, the more you'll, you'll be familiar with these parameters. You could probably just skip ahead to the later sections of this video. Um, but for now, I want to show the details behind area roughing and how we achieve the final toolpath that actually does all the roughing we're looking to do. So at this point, it's calculating between those two, those two passes this blended toolpath. And again, all the linkages here you can play around with. You can get this to actually change the linkages so they're a little smoother. But I'm looking at the blue portion, the toolpath itself. You can see that it actually has blended and followed the curvature of the surface and given me that 100,000 step over. Now, if that was it, if this tool could handle that depth, then I'd be done. But I actually need to add some depths of cut here. And I also probably don't want to um, machine air. Uh, I don't want to cut some air on this thing. This thing has a unique shape. Um, so I'm going to take into account all of that. So back to the area roughing, area roughing tab. What I can do is I can add depth cuts. And then what this does here, this is a little different than what we've seen on the 2.5D side with the area clearance. Uh, what we need to do here is give it a number of steps and the spacing of that steps. So I'll just put in 12 passes, 12 passes of, let's say, a quarter inch depth of cut. And the start height, just how far above that, that final uh, bit right there, uh, I'm just going to say zero. I just want to start right on that surface. Now, if I generate this, again, we're just going to see the steps that go into the methodology of using area clearance. That's going to add 12 passes, a quarter inch, starting from that final pass we see on screen right now. Once this generates, you'll see that it literally just does a translation along the tool axis of 12 by a quarter inch. Now, obviously, that offset there, it begins to collapse on itself because of the nature of the five axis, but also it's cutting air. I don't need all that. So that's where we can use one of the other options inside of the five axis, which is rest machining. And here, since we're adding multiple passes, this is going to be really useful because I can go to from work in progress, click on the options button. I don't really have anything there to reference, so it's just going to go from the original stock. And the stock on this part, if I save this for now, I'm just going to say no on this for now. So if we take a look at my stock, I'm actually using a piece of turn stock. So this has already been turned. That is the, the, the shape of the stock. So because I'm working off the work of progress, it's looking at that stock. So what I'll do now is I'll just generate the toolpath with all those parameters in place. And once we see the generated toolpath, we'll see that of those 12 passes at a quarter inch spacing, it trimmed the toolpath to only engage the material. So what we see there is that quarter inch depth of cut specific to the material that was left behind. Now again, these passes, we can trim that up in our link section, but essentially the idea here is the area clearance has given us that five axis roughing that we need to rough out this impeller. And then from there, we have 12 other ones to do. Uh, improving out the piece, I probably want to do at least the other side as well before I finish that face. So one last thing we can do here is we can just go back into the operation We can go to our advanced tab, add a rotation of the toolpath along the Z axis, which is our rotary axis. We have 12 veins we need to rough out. We need an angle of 30. And then from there, I'll just do a preview. We can see that it repeats that toolpath along the entire impeller, roughing out all that material all in five axis. And the reason we want to do this sort of rotation of a pattern here is because a five axis toolpath is a very complex toolpath. It will require a lot more calculations than simply just indexing it 30 degrees along the Z axis. But this is a really good way to rough out parts that are five axis, rough out parts that don't necessarily yield themselves to a three axis operation that easy. Uh, and it, uh, it utilizes the full kinematics of your machine. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main tech line found on our website. And if you like these videos, I uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. Thanks for watching.